The first time I came to Berlin was 30 years ago in 1979. I was a young man. I was 22 years old, full of energy. Uh, today is my third time in Berlin. I mean, I know I'm a middle-aged man. I'm not an old man, middle-aged man. 30 years ago, uh, the first time in 1979, the wall was still somewhere around here, and we were taken to East Berlin also to talk to some Protestant groups there. Um, I came the second time about 10 years ago uh, to speak at the Center for the Study of Anti-Semitism at. Uh, Berlin Technical University. Ten years ago, there was a, a big conference, and I spoke there, and now ten years later, uh, coming here. Now, uh, I do actually want to link this issue of the Holocaust. I'm in mean, Germany. I've got to talk about the Holocaust, isn't it? You can't come to Germany without talking about the Holocaust. But I also wanted to, to link it to the to the Palestinian situation and the Palestinian catastrophe and what happened in Gaza. Um, and, the, and the war crimes. And also recently we had the Goldstone Report at the UN. Have you heard about Goldstone? Okay. If I say something which you haven't heard about, just shout and I will try to explain it. Okay. Um, I, I, I want to take you back to 1948 and to Palestine before Israel was created in 1948 and to link it to the situation in Gaza and also to the peace process. When I came to Germany in 1979, everyone was talking about the peace process. 79. Carter, Sadat, Begin. Uh, Carter and Sad uh, Sadat and Begin got a Nobel Peace Prize for it. Can you imagine? Begin. In 1948, he carried out a major massacre in 1948. And he got a peace, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Now, Obama recently got also a Nobel Peace Prize for what? for not being George Bush. <laughs> just from just not being George Bush, we've got a, you know, but there's a long history. Sadat had a peace prize, a, a ruthless dictator also. Uh, I'll come back to Obama. Do we have really a, a chance for peace under Michelle and Barack Obama? Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, Hussein Obama. His father is a Muslim from Kenya. But he says, look, I was brought up by my grandmother, who is a Christian and white. He doesn't want to be contaminated by Islam. He says clearly, I mean, why? I'm a black person, but I was brought up by a white woman, Christian woman. Quite incredible, a black man running a white empire and speaking, going to Cairo, giving a very good speech in Cairo, quite moderate speech. I mean, if you compare his speech to George Bush's speech, you could, you say, this guy should have two peace, two Nobel Peace Prizes, you know, just one. Um, but do we really have any chance of peace under Barack Obama on the Palestinian side, Mahmoud Abbas and Netanyahu? Is there any chance for it? I mean, this idea that you have peace process which is, has been going on for about nearly 40, 40 years and with no peace, with absolutely no peace, peace process with no peace, open-ended. So it's quite possible that I will come back to Berlin in 20 years from now and people will still talk about peace process. Very likely, 20 years from now, the situation on the ground could be much, much worse. The situation on the ground in East Jerusalem, on the West Bank, is changing. Changing, really. The Israelis are dictating changes by the wall, by legal measures, by denying people access to Jerusalem, by the fact that if you live in Ramallah and you stay in Ramallah, you can't get into East Jerusalem. Pun? The translation, can you translate? Okay, can you hear me? Is it too loud? Too close, too loud? No, shall I speak without a microphone? Is it much better? Okay. I will try. I thought it was a... Uh, 
I'm, I, I am a historian. I think you really can't understand what's happening in Gaza without going back. And you don't just go back to 1967. You go back to 1948. And you go back before Israel was created in 1948. And talking about the idea of a wall, the idea of having a wall, the Israelis are building a wall at the heart of Palestine. They're not building a wall in the bo on the border between the West Bank and, uh, and Israel. They were building a wall actually in the heart of the West Bank. And the wall is many walls, by the way. It's not that you can have a Palestinian state on the east side of the wall. Because the wall is many walls, a system of walls. If you go to Bethlehem, the Bethlehem is surrounded by a wall. If you go to Abu Dis University, Quds University, beside, the Israelis are building many walls. See, the idea of a wall, having a wall, it's an old idea. And as a historian who looked at uh, the mandatory period, the idea of having an iron wall, iron wall, in Palestine was suggested by a key Zionist leader, Jabotinsky. In 1925, he's talking about how do you create a Jewish state in Palestine? The only way you create a Jewish state in Palestine, in a country which is populated by 95% on Jews, Jews were in Europe. There were, no, there were hardly any Jews in Palestine in 1925. Jabotinsky says you can only do it by an iron wall. You create a Jewish settlement, you surround that settlement by a wall, and you have a tower, and that settlement becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and ultimately you impose this wall on the Palestinians. You can't create a Jewish state voluntarily, with agreement, uh, you can only impose it. The Israelis imposed a Jewish state on the Palestinians in 1948. They didn't just impose it, they also cleared out the people. They took their land, they ethnic cleansed the people. They could not create a Jewish state when you have the majority of people living on the land. The only way to do it is try to do it by force and to impose it with the support of the great powers, the British, the Stalin. You have Stalin uh, gave arms to the Israelis. The Israelis created a Jewish state in 1948 in a country which is by, populated by uh, Muslim, Christian, Jews, but they're the majority Palestinian Arabs for centuries. They created Jew, a Jewish state by force through arms and they destroyed the population. They, they destroyed what I call historic Palestine. But you couldn't create a Jewish state in 1948 without destroying Palestine. Even if you wanted partition, whichever way you partition the country, you will have a, at least 50% of the population were Palestinians. Now, um, uh, in, 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 um, I came to do my PhD in London in the 80s uh, on Iraq. I did my doctorate on Iraq. When I finished my PhD, I went back to, to, to Jerusalem where I lived for so many years. And I wanted to look at Israeli archives about 1948 and about what happened before that. I was quite shocked. I lived in the Galilee most of my life. I spoke Hebrew, I lived in the Galilee, I know about it. I discovered a huge amount of materials, archives, Israeli documents, Hebrew documents, about this idea of transfer in Zionism. And I wrote a book about it in 1990. We have mountains of documents about the way the, the Zionist leadership in Palestine discussed transfer, debated transfer, long before 1948. Planned transfer. I think I was, I was the only one actually who discovered transfer committees. They really sat and set up committees and said, let's try to clear them out. Let's try to move them out. Let's try to move them in mass. Let's try to build cities and towns for them in Iraq and Transjordan. About, um, uh, in 1992, I, I wrote a book about the idea of transfer, and the book actually is quite well known. Maybe not in Germany, but it is actually well known to the English-speaking world, and it's also translated into Spanish and into Arabic. And, uh, it basically, the book was based on Israeli archives. <coughs> Before 1948, you have the Zionist leadership sitting together and planning to, to transfer the Palestinians. I don't think really they wanted to exterminate us. I know the Nazis wanted to exterminate the Jews. We know that. 
We know the Jewish Holocaust was planned by the Nazis. I think the Zionist leadership wanted to shift us out of the country. They really came to the conclusion that you cannot create a Jewish state by buying land. It doesn't work. You buy Dunam here, you buy Dunam there. It might take hundreds of years. It might take 1,000 years to buy 10% of the country. It wasn't working. The Zionists actually tried to buy land, but it didn't work. Until 1948, they bought about 5% of the country. 5%. 95% was still controlled by the Palestinians. The idea of buying land, the idea we have Jewish settlement, Jewish immigrations coming from Europe, from Germany, from Russia, and gradually you create a big community and you buy the land. It didn't work. By 1936, 37, 10 years before the catastrophe, before Israel was founded, they came to the conclusion the only way to do it is to take people in a mass and to shift them out. And they, they hope that the British will do them. The British were the colonial power in Palestine. Uh, but it, 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 the, this idea that shifting the Palestinians, expelling them, having five to six million Palestinian refugees now we have. Really, nearly two-thirds of the Palestinians are refugees. Five to six million Palestinians are refugees. Two and a half million in Jordan, half a million in Lebanon, half a million in Syria, um, 300,000 in, in Saudi Arabia. Two-thirds of us are refugees. Only a small minority of us actually live on the West Bank and Gaza. A third of us live on the West Bank and Gaza. When people talk about the West Bank and Gaza, they really talk about 20% of historic Palestine, talk about a, a third of the, uh, less than a third of the Palestinians. So those people who really think about the West Bank and Gaza as a state, as a Palestinian state, they really think about a small part of Palestine. They don't think about Palestine. They think about the last 20%. And they think about a small minority of the Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza. Most Palestinians are refugees. The scale of the refugee problem is something which we don't have in Germany, we don't have Britain. You don't have two-thirds of the British are refugees, two-thirds of the Irish, the French, the Russians. Why do you have it? Do you have any people on earth which is about 67 of them are refugees? You don't. Do you, can, can you think about a country, people, a nation? The scale of the refugee problem, really, five to six million Pal uh, Palestinians are refugees. And they live not far from Palestine, by the way. <laughs> they live in Jordan. Some live in Gaza. 80% of Gaza are refugees. 80% of Gaza. It's a small area in Palestine. About, what, 2% of Palestine are Gaza? Most of them come from Jaffa and what became known as Tel Aviv and the villages in the south and... Uh, Askalan and Ishdod, most of them come from, from Israel now. 80% of them. You know, almost the entire leadership of Hamas are refugees from 1948. Those people assassinated by Israel. The leadership of Hamas, they're all refugees from 1948. All of them. And people talk about Hamas, they don't, they don't dig up, they don't look at the history. They don't. They don't understand what Gaza is really about. Why Gaza is, is like a prison, concentration camp. Why is it that we ended up with a big concentration camp in Gaza? Where is the history behind it? How come you have hundreds of thousands of people pushed into small part of the land 